ஓம் அக்கான ஸ்தாபிதீனூத்தீமே ீகிருஷ்ணச்சைத்தன்னிவாசாதிவோக்தோ தீனபந்தோ ஜகாத்பதி கோபேஷோபிகாந்தராதாகாந்தனமஸ்தீபிராவனீஸ்வரி மிருகவானுசேவீணமாமி ஹரி மஞ்சாக்கல்பதருபாசிந்துபேவோனமோனமோஷ்ணோ கிருஷ்ணீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீரீ
हुताय चास्क्रीत भगवत ऋचिवतारय तदजक्ष मनो मसुर हता मोदी तो साधुरपी वृश्चिक लोकाष्ट निर्भित प्रतिजंति सर्वे रूपन सिंह विभयाय जन स्मरती प्रहलाद महाराज ऑफरिंग प्रेयर्स टू लॉर्ड नृसिंह दे दे भाष्य सार फिफ्टी फिफ्टी भाषा ईच एंड एवरी लाइन इज सो इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट ऑल वैष्णवा दे हैव पिक्ट अप दिस प्रेयर एज वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट within the Srimad Bhagavatam Shastra scripture. <clears throat> so Prahlad Maharaj is saying that Viprad Dishara Guna Jutad Aravind Nama Pad Aravind Mimukad Sapachang Barishtyam. Sapachang, Shra means dog. And pachang means cooking. So, in the human society, uh, the lowest class of men are considered the dog eaters. In the Manushangita, there is a list of. Uh, different kinds of men eating different kinds of flesh, and in the Ayurved, there is a list of drabbagun. Drabbagun means uh, medical effect of certain type of things. So that is a very big book, and. All kinds of vegetables, all kinds of flesh, all kinds of fish, and everything is detailed there. And there is description: what is the effect of eating such and such things? So it is not that the Vedic civilization does not know what is the effect of eating flesh. they have got very broad analytical knowledge and in the recent years mr george barnard saw he also say that you are what you eat so if you eat a certain type of food then your constitution of the body mentality status everything becomes according to that food that is a fact so there is a class of men who are called sapach sapach means dog eaters <coughs> so the dog eater is called chandala panchama the human society is divided into four first class second class third class fourth class and panchama means fifth class so these dog eaters they are considered as the fifth class those who are uh, uh, flesh eaters they are fourth class and those who are vegetarians they are first class second class third class uh, and those who are animal food eaters they are fourth class and less than that those who have no distinction 
of eating any kind of flesh, uh, there are certain classes of nation also. Uh, they say the Chinese people, they eat anything. Uh, so uh, if a man is considered to be situated at a certain status of civilization, according to the uh, modes of material nature, and that is manifested by eating, by behaving. Achar vichar. Achar means uh, uh, behavior, and vichar means judgment. By advancement of education, one becomes uh, fixed up to take things by judgment. That is called vichar. And achar means cleanliness or behavior. So achar vichar, the first, second, and third class human being, they are situated in achar and vichar. And in modern civilization also, they say sometimes that a, a nation is calculated how far he is civilized by the consumption of amount of soap. That means the soap-using nation means that cleans. So cleanliness is still uh, considered as the civilized status of man. Unclean status. There are different kinds of cleanliness. Inside Bajjab uh, Bhantaram, uh, cleanliness, simply soap and water cleanliness is not cleanliness. Inside cleanliness also required. Inside cleanliness, uh, dairy uh, clearing the bowels. In the yoga system, this is very necessary. They have got a system. If the bowel is not clear, then uh, dhoti, it is called dhoti. The intestines should be cleared. So they have a process. Some of the yogis that are so expert that they can take out the intestine from the abdomen and clear it and put it again. Yes. This is, these are the perfection of yoga system. So inside cleanliness is very important thing. If the bowel is not clear, if the stools are congested, the appendicitis disease is means that those who are constipated gradually Inside their stool becomes dry and it becomes a block to the intestine. So if it becomes too much blocked, if it is not possible to be clear, then the modern medical science, they cut the abdomen and cut the part and clear it and again stitch it. That is appendicitis. So far I know I'm not a medical man. There are so many diseases that is due to uh, this non-clearance of the intestines. Therefore we have to eat in such proportion and such kind of food that the inside intestines may remain always clear. In a Bengali proverb, there is a saying that bhūri and mūri, if your, these two things are very clear, then there is no question of disease. Bhūri means this abdomen, and mūri means this head. 
if you keep your head and the belly very clear, then you are free from all this. So the yoga process by breathing exercise, by that dhoti process, uh, there are so many, by sitting posture, so many things. The whole thing is that they keep the body very fit, brain clear, so that one can think of higher subject matter very nicely. And the more we eat nonsense things which our nature cannot accept. So there are different classes of men and different kinds of eating. So there is a class of men, dog eaters. I do not know whether in your country there is any class of men who are dog eaters, but India, Assam side, there is a class of men who are still dog eaters. Uh, uh, they make a very nice dog preparation. Uh, they give the dog to eat rice and molasses mixed together and try to get it eat more and more so that by suffocation it dies, itty, itty. Then the whole dog is burnt, you see, and then they release that uh, roasted dog. Roasted pig, I have seen, there is a class. They roast the pig and they eat. So this class of men, they roast dog. And it is called dog cake. Uh, kukur pitha. Pitha means cake and dog means, uh, kukur means dog. So they are in different parts of the world, four hundred and thousand and a four thousand, eight million, eight million and four hundred thousand, yes. So eight million other than human being and four hundred thousand human being. So amongst these four hundred different species of human being or classes of they do not accept species, they say classes, all right. So here, sapajang varishtam manne tadapita padaravindam evasat sapajang varishtam. So here, Prilad Maharaj is giving preference to a person who is born in a family of dog eaters. Then to a Brahmin, qualified Brahmin with twelve qualifications, uh, education, qualification, but still if he is impersonalist or voidist, generally when at the modern age, when one becomes uh, very much advanced in so-called education, he becomes impersonalist, voidist. So, Srimad Bhagavatam, through Prahlad Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj is authority, is condemning. He says that such kind of learned Brahmin, even though he is qualified academically and other Brahminical qualification, but he, if he is only uh, disqualification is that he is not a devotee, then uh, he is lower, uh, he is not even equal to the person 
who is born in a family of dog eaters, but he is a devote. The two things are to be studied here, that to become a devotee does not require to take birth in a high aristocratic family or Brahmin family, because here it is said sapacaṁ varishtha. That means the person who is considered to be the less than the fourth class man, uh, he also uh, exalted if he is devote. Uh, what is the re reason? Uh, because devote means prāṇaṁ punāti sakunaṁ uh, manne tadarpita mano vacane vacane uh, itārta. Because devotee means who has dedicated, I have already explained the other day, dedicated his body, mind, and words for Krishna. That is the test of devotee. Whether he has engaged these three things to the service of the Lord, then he is devotee. Body, because our all activities are based on these three principles. With mind we plan, thinking, feeling, willing. And willing is oh, given practical shape by the bodily work or words by speaking. So this is the test of of a devotee. Prahlad Maharaj said, he may be born in a family of the dog eaters, but because he has engaged his body, mind, and words uh, for Krishna, for service of Krishna, then he is better, he is superior, he is in superior position than the so-called Brahmin with all good qualifications, but uh, without any, any devotional spirit. And why he is preferred? There is prāṇaṁ kunāti sakulaṁ. This man, this sapacha, or the man born in the family of uh, Chandāla, he is able to deliver his whole dynasty, whole dynasty, uh, sakulam. This very word is used here, uh, prāṇaṁ punāt. He personally becomes purified, there is no doubt about it, prāṇaṁ. His life is perfect, punāt. Punāti means purified. And Sakulam, Sakulam means along with his family members. He is not only personally becoming purified, but his parents, his parents' father, his father, his brother, his Sakulam, Kula, Kula means the whole family. Sakulam Punasi. Aravindanabha Pada Aravinda Pimukhat Katham Bhutta Sapacham. What kind of uh, fifth class man? He is not fifth class man. He may be born in a fifth class family, but he is not fifth class, just like Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj, directly his father is a great demon, but he is not demon. It does not mean that a person born of low family is also low. This is not the verdict of Vedas. The Vedic culture was lost or put into uh, difficulty simply for the reason when the Vedic followers in India they 
made this classification of Brahmin, Kshatriya as hereditary. There is hereditary preference, certainly. If a man is born in a Brahmin family, that is also stated in the Bhagavad Gita. That. But uh, in the, by the contamination of Kaliju, uh, all higher class families, they have been contaminated. For example, we find it all this we, uh, in the Prahlad Maharaj instruction, you shall say, uh, that even if one is uh, belonging to the higher great families, but that is not simply by birthright. There are uh, regulative principles, just like our society members. Simply by being a member of the society, being situated, is not all. He has to keep himself always alert in the principles. Then he is all right. Otherwise he is fallen down. Similarly, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, on all Vedic scripture it is stated that the Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, the higher class, how they can keep up their status? You must keep your status. Just like in England, the rule is that when a man is recognized as knight or lord by his activities, in order to continue the family as lord family, they have to deposit a certain amount of money uh, so that they can continue to keep up the position of Lord family. Uh, that amount should be deposited in the government uh, treasury. So you cannot withdraw that, but you can enjoy the interest out of There's a huge amount. Otherwise how he can keep up the status of Lord family. And the eldest son of the family is awarded the title Lord, and he gets that interest and keeps up the status. Perhaps you know it. So simply to take birth in a big family or a high family is not all. One has to qualify himself and keep up the status, the tradition of the family, then he is all right. Uh, otherwise, uh, similarly, the opposite side, a man may be born in a family of dog-eaters, but he, if he keeps himself as dog-eater, then he is, he is dog-eater family. But, but he changes his status. No more dog eater, but he's a devotee. He's not counted as belonging to that family. Either this side or that side. Uh, a man born in a high family, if he is unable to keep up the status of the standard of living and tradition of that high family, then he does not belong. Similarly, a man born in the lower family, if he does not keep to the status of that lower family, he takes to the standard of Brahmin family, Vaishnava family, then he is to be considered belonging to that status. Not that because he is born in that uh, dog-eater's family, uh, he cannot become a Brahmin. No. This is not the Vedic Indians. A person born in the dog-eater's family can be raised to the standard of Brahmin family, or a person born in the Brahmin family can be lowered down to the status of a dog-eater's family if he does not keep the status. 
So it is the qualification. That is Vedic. So as soon as this uh, standard method was changed into mechanical, a person born in Bhamini family, he may be less than a dog eater's family, he is worshipped as Bhamini. This has reigned the Indian civilization. But uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this age, uh, he did not recognize. He did not recognize. He actually followed the Vedic principle. He said that it doesn't matter. Uh, one is not responsible for his birth. How can one be responsible? Maybe the father and mother are different, or somewhere or other he is born in that father and mother, but uh, he has got a certain type of body, but that does that he is responsible for that. He is responsible in the, I mean, the final sense that due to uh, some of his past misdeeds he has been born in that way. But that is not the prime responsibility. The prime responsibility is that everyone is open to accept Krishna consciousness, just like Prahlādhāma. He is born of a, a demon father, but Krishna consciousness is open for him. He has accepted. So he is not to be considered as uh, one of the members of the demon family. So he is personally uh, recognizing uh, that such a person, even born in lower family, he can purify himself by Krishna consciousness and he can purify his whole family. This will be very particularly noted. This word is Sakulam. Sa means with, and kulam means fan. Sakulam punat. Sakulam. Pranam punat is sakulam natu bhuri manaha. But that man who is simply proud that I am born in such and such family, uh, he is a rascal. Because this false prestige is rascal. That false prestige has killed the Vedic civilization. When I came to your country, I saw nice boys and girls, finely educated, belonging to respectable family, and they are taking to any kind of work. It doesn't matter. So I was very much pleased. But in India, a man born in Brahmin family, and if he is mostly there poverty stricken at the present moment, if he is asked that you can, you can come, you take uh, daily five rupees, you can wash the dishes, or he will never accept. He will starve to death, but he will not accept. He will think, oh, I am born in a Brahmin family. How can I wash your dishes? This, this is false prestige. Why? You are not doing the activities of a Brahmin. You are poverty stricken. You are not educated. Why do you claim that you are Brahmin? But that false prestige is there. Oh, I am Brahmin. And society accepts also. Oh, yeah. they, they will hesitate. Even if he accepts that, yes, I shall wash your dishes, the family will not uh, allow him. Then say, so, oh, you are coming from Brahmin. How can you wash my dishes? We shall go to hell. You see, these notions are there. You see. So he is suffering and he is suffering by this false prestige. Both of them suffering. But when I saw in your country that any boy, any girl, they are prepared to work, anything, oh, that's 
very nice. Uh, all right, I have no money, so I can accept. And the present, considering the present status, uh, everything has stopped entirely. Therefore, to uh, bring everything on the equal level of high standard and perfectional standard is Krishna consciousness. If the people of the world accepts this philosophy, Krishna consciousness, there is no more higher or lower level. Sama sarveshu bhūtesh, sama, sama means equal. All living entities on the same level. And how it is possible? Brahma bhūta, when they are identified with Brahma. That means Krishna. Krishna is part of Brahma. So when one identifies uh, his body, his mind, his activities, everything with Krishna, then there is no more such uh, distinction of higher and lower, uh, either in word or in thinking or in action, no more. Uh, because that is the purificatory process, never mind. What was your status of life? What was your family life? It doesn't matter. Pranam punati saklam is immediately purified, not only himself, but with his whole family, purified. Pranam punati burimana. And that man who is under uh, uh, false prestige, impression, that I am this, I am that, I am, I am high, I am he cannot deliver himself because he's false. What is the value of false prestige? False prestige has no value. If you are actually Brahmin or if you are actually king, you can be proud of your position that I am king and this or that. But actually if you are less than the sapacha or the dog eaters, but why should you be proud of your false prestige? Therefore, by that false prestige, he cannot even deliver himself and what to speak of his family. That is stated here. Uh, that man, Sapacha, born uh, because he has dedicated his life, his uh, mind and uh, words for Krishna, he is able to deliver himself and his family. But this man who is popped out with false prestige, he cannot deliver himself only. And what to speak of his family? This is clearly described by Prahlad Maharaj. Tasmin Aravinda Nabhe Arpita Manoadaya Jinatam Hitam Karma. Manni Tadarpita Manovachane Hitam Hitartha. Because he has dedicated his life for Krishna. Therefore, he can do this. He can purify himself and purify his family. Bodhisattva hetu sa evam bhuta sapacha sadvam kulam punati. Siddhar Maharaj also, uh, Siddhar Shami, he is a great learned scholar, original commentator of uh, Srimad Bhagavad. He is accepted as the great authority even by Lord Chaitan. He is not ordinary commentator. So he gives his opinion that Buddhistatya Hetu, why he is adored so much? Buddhistatya even Buddha Sapacham, such kind of Sapacha, by a person born in the family of dog eaters. Sarvam kulam punati. He purifies his whole family. So these are authoritative statements. Bhurimana gadve jasya satu vipra atmana vina punati. And those who are placed in that false prestige that I am this Brahmin, I am born in Brahmin family and this and that. 
Siddhar Swami says, that false pride, prestige, garbo jasya, satu, satu vipra atmanam. He may be a vipra, a qualified Brahmin, but he cannot uh, purify himself. What to speak of his family? This is the remark by Siddhar Swami. Atmanam pinapna kutah kulam. Jata bhakti hina sa ete guna gadvaya bhavanti natu suddhaye ata hina iti bhava. It is very nice comment. He said that without devotion and service, without being Krishna conscious, one is surely to become falsely puffed. Because he has got his bodily concept of life. Uh, Siddhar Maharaj clearly says that bhakti hinasya ete guna, ete guna, all this material qualification, highly educated and samadhamati dikha, practice, uh, the, how to control the mind, senses, everything is complete. So ete guna, when one becomes such qualified, uh, he becomes proud. That is the material status of life. Uh, pride is a material... Um, pride means if one is too much proud of his acquisition, either educational or material wealth, that means he is in the uh, material platform. Uh, this very test. A devotee is never uh, proud. Uh, he is humble. Humble and me. Uh, just Lord Jesus Christ also said, the humble and me will attain the kingdom of God. Is it not? So, so Vaishnav is humble and meek. Uh, he is not proud. Because even if he has got great amount of wealth, good qualification, and everything, he thinks that these things are Krishna's. I am his servant. I I have got the opportunity to serve him with these qualifications. If I am highly educated, if I have got good knowledge, if I am great philosopher, scientist, everything, if I do not engage all these qualifications to Krishna's service, then I shall naturally become falsely proud, and that is the cause of my fall down. I will never be able to approach God because I am not humble and meek. But as soon as one engages these qualifications for Krishna's service, a scientist, uh, he can present so many scientific theses to prove that there is God. That is his perfection of scientific knowledge. Uh, if a philosopher uh, uh, writes article to convince man that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God by his philosophical thesis. Because there are men who want to understand the absolute truth through philosophy, through science. So it is the duty of those who are scientifically advanced, philosophically advanced, or materially advanced, and wealthy, they should engage all these parts Krishna's service. Because we have to engage ourselves. Devotee means prana uh, yatri dhyavacha. Life, uh, wealth, prana means life, wealth, uh, artha means wealth, prana, artha, dhya, intelligence, uh, prana yatri dhyavacha and words. Uh, if one has no money, uh, no intelligence, uh, he can use his words. He can go to the people and he can say, please chant Hare Krishna. Uh, he can do. Uh, so this preaching was, the service of Krishna is not, uh, I mean, it is uh, blocked by any disqualification uh, if one is ready to serve. So Siddhar Maharaj said that that's pride and eti guna gadvayo bhavanti. If one is simply materially qualified, 
that becomes the cause of his false prestige and pride. That's all. What to speak of purifying himself. And he, Bhavanti, no Suddhaye. Suddhaye. Suddhaye means purification. The first purificatory process as stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Amanityam, Adamityam, Ahimsya. Amanityam. Humble and me. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Humbler than the blade of grass and taller than the tree. So these are the qualifications, spiritual qualifications. So if, if one becomes falsely proud, then where is his spiritual qualification? Everything is lost. Everything gone, immediately. So in spite of his all good qualifications, if he's simply proud, uh, then the, everything becomes zero. Uh, of course, not in this country, in our country. Milk is considered to be very uh, nice, nutritious food. Uh, but if there is a drop of wine mixed with milk, uh, it is a no more. Finished. If it is touched by the leaf of the serpent, it is finished. No more. Similarly, one may have all these qualifications. He may become, become a Brahmin or Kshatriya or very high caste, very aristocratic, all this. That's all right. But if it is simply false prestige, if it is meant for simply saying one's false prestige, then those qualifications have no value. And when there is no value, he cannot purify himself, what to speak of, purifying his whole family. But this man who is born in the family of Sapacha, dog eaters, because he has taken to Krishna consciousness, because he has become humble and meek, because he has engaged his body, mind, and words for the service of Krishna, he can purify himself and he can um, deliver his whole friend. Oh. Thank you. There are many. Thakur Haridas. He is born in Mahavidan family. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave him the place. Nama Acharya. He became the Acharya of preaching. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's whole mission was interested to him. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he appeared for preaching the importance of chanting Hare Krishna. And practically, he entrusted the business to Haridas Thakur, who was by his birth a Mahavidan. There are many others. Many others. There's a Pullad Maharaj. He is a born of a demon father. He is also Acharya. Amongst the twelve recognized Acharya of Bhagavad, uh, Sambhu, Narada Sambhu, Kumara, Kapila, Manu, Prahlad. There are twelve recognized acharyas of the Bhagavati school, and Prahlad Maharaj is one of them. This Prahlad Maharaj. Because he is born of a demon father, a demonic father. They are, they can do anything. They are even flesh eaters. They are everything. Demons means 
flesh eaters. They are doing illegal. Oh, I want to say drunkards, gamblers, woman hunters. These are the qualifications of the demons. Because demons means materialistic. That's all. And these four qualifications must be there. A materialistic man. Woman hunter and a drunkard and flesh eater and gambler. Wherever you find these four principles, oh, they are demons. So Prahlad Maharaj himself was born of the demon family. Uh, he was, um, his all class friends were uh, born of demon father. He, uh, his country was demonic country. His family was demonic. And he became a great devotee. Uh, of course, that is very long time uh, narration. But in our recent years, uh, Haridas Thakur, born of a Brahmin, a Mahavidyan family, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted. This Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Rupa Goswami, uh, they were, of course, originally they were Brahmins, but they fell down on account of this association. And formally they accepted service. Uh, Brahmin could not accept any service. And they accepted service of Mahavidyan government. So immediately they were... Uh, what is called ostracized from the Brahmin society. They are not accepted in the society. And they change their name, Sakar Mallik and Dovid Khas. Uh, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu picked them up and made them Goswamins. Goswamins means the great teachers, Guru. Goswami means. But there are many instances. Not one, but many thousands. And originally, even in the Vedic age, Upanishad age, there is one uh, Sattakam Javal Upanishad. That story I have told. That oh, the Sattakam he went to Gautam Muni for initiation. So formally the spiritual master will not accept anybody as disciple if he is not born in a Brahmin family. So he was asked, oh, who is your father? So he could not give his father's name. Then he uh, asked him, that, go to your mother, who is your father? Just try to understand and let me know. Then he went to his mother, and mother said, My dear boy, I do not know who is your father. I have many friends, I do not know by whom you are born. And he came back and said, My mother said that he had many friends. Uh, he cannot, she cannot say who is my exactly father. Oh, you are Brahmin. Come on. I didn't see it. You are Brahmin. Qualification. He said the plain truth. Oh, oh, the qualification. Come on, I shall elicit. Nobody will say that, oh, I have no, uh, my father had many friends and I do not know what is it. Everyone will try to hide this, but he plainly said immediately. Oh. And because he was so truthful, therefore his name is Sattaka. Sattaka means he does not know. That is the first qualification of a Brahmin. Sattva, he should be truthful, even to the enemies. Nobody becomes truthful to the enemy. He does not uh, disclose the secret. But a uh, Brahmin is supposed to be so much truthful that if the enemy asks that, uh, what is your position, he will say, this is my position. So they, they picked up the, by quality. What quality is? So this is our process. Our Krishna consciousness, Chaitanya Mahasprava process is that if anyone is a little inclined to Krishna, so he should give 
in all facilities to become develop Krishna consciousness. That is Pancharatri Vidhi. According to Vedic Vidhi, according to Vedic way, just like we are initiating, nobody can be initiated unless he is born of high family. His father must have been Brahmin, Kshatriya, or Vaishya. Then he can be initiated. But Pancharatik Vidhi, they say, they accept, nobody is Brahmin, Suddha, everyone is Suddha. Kalu Suddha Sambhava. In this age, uh, nobody is actually born of a Brahmin family or Chatriya family. That is accepted because nobody is keeping up their standard. They are simply following some false prestige. So therefore, the Pancharatik Vidhi, they do not recognize anybody as qualified Brahmin. Everyone should and begin from the lowest stage, uh, get him uh, conversant in Krishna consciousness, then initiate him and gradually elevate him by this process. So our this Krishna conscious movement is based on this process, that we accept everyone as lower. Uh, even if he's uh, my Guru Maharaj, uh, even if he is a, a, a born of a Brahmin family, he would not recognize that he is a Brahmin. He would treat him as others. And if he, even if he had his sacred thread from his family, Guru Maharaj would say, throw it away, take new thread. The Bon Maharaj, he, he is coming from a Brahmin family. He had to throw away his old sacred thread and he was further initiated. Yes. He did not recognize anyone as Brahmin or high class. No, everyone is Sudra. Come on, new beginning, new life again. And that is the whole basic principle of our Krishna consciousness. We take everyone as this quality coming from Sapacha. But he should be given the chance to become Haridas Thakur. That is our whole process. Why do you inquire one or two instances? <laughs> this is all the process is like that. nine qualifications. He must be truthful. He must be controlling the senses, mind. He must be tolerant. And then sattva, sama, dhamma, saucha, he must be clean. And he must believe in the shastra, in the scriptures. And he must be conversant with the Shastri knowledge. And these are the qualifications of Brahmins. The first qualification is that he must be truthful. Just like this Sattvakam. He plainly, plainly said the real truth and he was immediately accepted. Yes, you have got the qualification of a Brahmin. You can speak the truth. Truth may be palatable and flavorful, that doesn't matter. Everything is uh, palatable to somebody and palatable to others. One man's food, another man's poison. But that doesn't matter. But the thing should be presented as it is. That is the point. There is no hide and seek policy. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, especially uh, was very much against untruth. The Haridas, uh, that uh, junior Haridas Thakur was rejected because he showed a little uh, symptom of untruthfulness. 
He was living in the company of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as, as in renounced order of life, but he had uh, at his heart uh, for sex life. So immediately he was rejected. Of course, this was a great stricture, uh, but he never had rejected grihasthas. He knows that grihastha has sex life. So he never rejected. So if you want sex life, become a grihastha. Just have a wife and live peacefully. But if you want to have sex life at the same time, you want to keep yourself as Brahmacharya, this is not true. This is condemned. Uh, that is the, uh, I mean, the instance shown by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that junior Haridas, he was keeping himself as renounced, but thinking of sex, he was rejected. But there are many householder devotees, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted them. So truthfulness in spiritual life, truthfulness is very essential. That is the first qualification. Brahminical qualification, sattva, samadhava, titikya, arjava, asthikam, jnanam, vijjnanam, brahmakarna, sabhava. It is stated in the Bhagavad And there are many other qualifications, and especially, specifically, a Brahmin should have these nine qualifications. But another point is that if one is sincerely in Krishna consciousness, all the good qualifications will come automatically. Therefore, uh, we give more uh, stress on Krishna consciousness, and if he is one is sincere in Krishna consciousness, all good qualifications will come. So you can chant with harmonium.
Parama, the Paripraja, Charya, Sutra, Sadasiman, Bhakti Siddhanta, Sarasri Goshami, Provadi, Jai, Ananda Kodi Vaishnav in the Key, Jai, Nama Charya, Srila Hrida, Chakuji, Jai, Prim Kaho, Sri Krishna, Jaitan, Napravini, Tan, and the Sea of the Gadada, Shumasha, the Gold, Hakun, Jai, Sri Radha, Krishna, Gopina, Sam Kundarada, Hakun, the Guru, and Sri Jai, Binaman, the Ham Ki Jai, Navadim, the Ham Ki Jai, Shami, the Hakun, the Key, Jai, all glory is to the assembly of body. All glory is to the assembly of body. All glory is to the assembly of body. Thank you very much.